we start with uh, state transition matrix using Kelly Hamilton theorem. In previous classes, we have seen the various method for calculations of state transition matrix. We have seen a power series method, then we have seen Laplace transform method and also we have seen a diagonalization method. Today we have to see another method which can uh, helps us for uh, state transition matrix. That means, we can get a state transition matrix by also another method. That method name is called Kelly Hamilton theorem. This theorem is very important. It can be useful in various application, particularly if you want to calculate inverse for that also this particular method can be useful. Then we will see what is that theorem. This theorem states that every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation. That is, if you take any matrix, if you determine its characteristic equation, it will satisfy it. That is very important theorem. How it is possible? That is, it says if you take a matrix, if you take this as a matrix A, and let us say it is 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3. And now we will take its characteristic equation that is lambda i minus a equal to lambda i minus a that is equal to. So, here lambda 0 0 lambda minus a here is 0 1 minus 2 minus 3 and if you solve it you will get lambda minus 1 2 lambda plus 3 and if you take its determinant lambda i minus a equal to lambda square plus 3 lambda plus 2 equal to 0. Now, this is the characteristic equation in terms of lambda. Normally, we are calculating the eigenvalues of this matrix and uh, if you replace this eigenvalue, it becomes 0. But Kelly Hamilton theorem said that here instead of this lambda, instead of this lambda, if you replace A, A is the original matrix. If you replace A in terms of lambda, you will get A square plus 3A plus 2I and that is also equal to 0. That is lambda and A we can interchange. This is the basic theory of the Kelly Hamilton theorem. Now, its applications. The first application is inverse of matrix and second one is the state transition matrix or your topic is state transition matrix, but uh, in here we will also determine the inverse and we have seen that the applications of inverse means the determination of inverse is helpful uh, in uh, various approaches. It is useful uh, in case of the uh, Laplace transform approach. It is also useful in um, uh, various uh, uh, say in, ca in case of getting the uh, state space model from the given transfer functions that is or that is this particular state this particular inverse is helpful inverse is helpful in getting the transfer function model function model from a given state space model. We have seen this part earlier. So, it has wide applications and however, here basic purpose is to getting a state transition matrix. Now, uh, first of all we will see how to calculate the inverse of the matrix using Kelly Hamilton theorem. Now, we start with the concepts. So, our main input is A matrix. So, input is A matrix and let us say it is n cross n matrix. 
Now we have to take lambda i minus a that is the cash equations and we will take the determinant of it that is equal to lambda h to n a of n minus 1 lambda n minus 1 plus a of n minus 2 lambda n minus 2 plus a 1 lambda plus a naught equal to 0. Now, this is the your cash stick polynomial in terms of lambda. When we are working on S domain, we can write down S instead of lambda that is S h to n a of n minus 1 S h to n minus 1 up to a 0. Now, our aim is to get the inverse. So, now this is the cash stick equations. So, what we can do if we further? we will apply the concept of the Kelly Hamilton theorem as we have seen the concept of Kelly Hamilton theorem that is lambda can be interchanged with a therefore, here we will convert this lambda into a. So, according to Kelly Hamilton theorem We can write down the above equation as a raised to n a of n minus 1 a raised to n minus 1 a n minus 2 a raised to n minus 2 this process repeated then here a 1 into a equals to 0. So, now this equation we have written. Now, our main purpose is to get the A inverse that is our base purpose is to determine A inverse. Now, what we can do to this equation we pre multiply A inverse both side. So, if we multiply A inverse to these particular equations what we will get? So, this n when we multiply by A inverse it becomes A n minus 1 plus A n minus 1 A it becomes n minus 2 plus a n minus 2 a n minus 3 and this process repeated it becomes a 1 I can say i plus a 0 into a inverse equal to 0. Now, our purpose is to get a inverse. So, a inverse we already got. So, what we can do all these terms this a of n minus 1 to a 1 i we move on the right side and this a 0 a inverse we keep it on one side. So, what we will get? So, this a inverse equal to this and as this shifting to right side. So, what we will get? We will get a of n minus 1 a n minus 1 a n minus 2 plus a n minus 2 a n minus 3 and here this process repeated a 1 into i and this is basically your a inverse. We have seen various methods for getting a inverse. If you want to a inverse there is a various method 1 a equals to adjoint of a divided by the determinant of a. This is 1 and now this is the alternative approach. We all we have also seen a liberal algorithm to calculate the inverse where this is based on the trace of the matrix that means we have seen the liberal algorithm is a suppose here a 1 1 a 1 2 a 2 1 a 2 2. So, this trace equal to a 1 1 plus a 2 2. So, based on this trace we have also determined uh, the inverse. Now, this is an alternative approach to get, get inverse. Now, we will see which method is found to be simple? We have seen that uh, if you uh, this particular approach a liberal algorithm for determination of inverse as the order increases this is better, but for lower order we have seen that this adjoining of a determinant is helpful. Now, we will try to solve an example to calculate the A inverse of a given system matrix. Suppose, we have taken a matrix A equal to 0 1 minus 2 minus 3 this is a matrix. Now, we have to take 
lambda minus a if you take lambda minus a it becomes lambda minus 1 2 lambda plus 3 now we want caustic equations so caustic equation becomes determinant of lambda minus a if you solve it we will get lambda square plus 3 lambda plus 2 equal to 0 but our aim is to a inverse but we have got equation in terms of lambda but we have a carry hamilton theorem which states that every square matrix satisfies its own cast equation now we can convert this lambda by a so if you convert this lambda by a so according to carry hamilton theorem this above equation can be written as that is according to kelly hamilton theorem above equation can be written as a square plus 3a equal to 0 now a square 3a plus 2 we have got but we want a inverse so best option is we apply or we multiply a inverse to both sides if you this is equation if you multiply it by a inverse this becomes a this becomes 3 i to a inverse equal to 0 that means this a order of 2 change to 1 this a and a inverse be neutralized so become identity matrix plus 2 into a inverse now we have to solve these equations so we can write down as 2 a inverse minus a plus 3 into i now what is a matrix a matrix is 0 1 minus 2 minus 3 plus 3 additive matrix is 1 0 0 1 and total this multiplied by 1 by 2 now now this particular matrix we have to solve then divide by 1 by 2 and after solving this we will get the a inverse as minus 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2 1 0 here is a simple mathematics just you multiply 3 then additions then 1 by 2 we can come across this a inverse matrix so we will find that in a very simple manner we have got the a inverse i think uh, particularly for second order system i think this method is better than the, this level algorithm uh, as well as the or conventional adjoining and determinant approach but again the problem is that if you increase the order for example here we have a raised to 4 a raised to 4 or we have this particular matrix this matrix this say 4 cross 4 that means finally this equation will get in terms of a cube a cube a square that means here we have to multiply this a matrices so it may increase your computations like this but as far as the we will find as for some lower order this kelly hamilton theorem is quite useful now we go for the second concept state transition matrix okay now we go with the concept of state transition matrix state transition matrix means e raised to 80 that is e raised to 80 and as i discussed earlier we have seen the various method to get the e raised to 80 and we will find that this e this Colley hamilton theorem is useful to getting the state transition matrix just looking after the a problem just it satisfies is means any square matrix satisfies cash equation it is hardly believable that how can this particular uh, concept is useful for state transition matrix now we will see some logic behind it the logic says that suppose if we had taken a one particular a functions say we have taken a function f and let us say it is a very higher order it is very higher order 
uh, to this f if you divide by a delta definitely the, the degree of uh, this del is lesser than f, f is very higher degree. So, f is divided by delta. So, what we will get? We will get one quotient and also we will get the remainder. So, here when this f divided by delta will be q plus remainder r divided by del and that means these above equations f by del equal to delt q delt plus r and if you equate this what we get equation f q delt plus r. Assume that delta is the characteristic polynomial of a any matrix, this delta is the characteristic polynomial of a f matrix that is if you having we take say this a matrix a is a matrix and this delta equal to lambda i minus a. So, definitely if you take determinant of this it become lambda minus a. So, this determinant is 0, this determinant lambda i minus a equal 0. So, this means this if this delta 0, if you replace here what will get f equals to r. Now, this f equals to r and r is the remainder and definitely degree of this r is also lesser than this delta. So, we get f equals to r. Now, this is the basically the concept concept that is f equals to r. Now, this concept we have to use in guessing getting the state transition matrix. Now, how will do it? Now, we take a polynomial which is represented in terms of lambda and let us say it is f of lambda, f of lambda is the polynomial. Then consider a square matrix A consider a square matrix matrix A and now it can be written as del of lambda equal to lambda i minus a and this is f of lambda and as I told you that f of lambda is higher degree than del of lambda. Now, we divide this. So, if you divide this f of lambda divided by del of lambda equal to this is equal to q of lambda plus r of lambda divided by del of lambda and after solving it it become f of lambda equal to q of lambda to del of lambda plus r of lambda. Now, we assume that this del of lambda equal to 0 and therefore, what we can say this f of lambda equal to r of lambda. But now, here is coming the, the concept of Kelly Hamilton theorem. This lambda can be interchanged with a matrix. So, therefore, this f of a is equal to r of a and this r of a can be written as this r of a we can write down as alpha 0 plus alpha 1 a plus alpha 2 a square plus this process repeated till alpha n minus a raised to n minus 1. That means, degree of this r of a is lesser than this both del lambda, del of lambda, f of lambda or del of a and f of a and now this is the r of lambda. Now, here this is f of a equals to r of a or we can say this f of lambda equal to r of lambda. Now, we want to determine the state transition matrix. Now, state transition matrix it nothing but e equal to a t or 
this is equal to say lambda t. So, here depend upon the eigenvalues. Suppose, if you are in a system, we have two eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, this for 1 lambda 1, this E of lambda 1 t equal to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 into A alpha 1 into say let us say in terms of lambda. And for another lambda lambda 2 E raise to lambda 2 to t equals to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 into into lambda 2. That means, whatever be the eigenvalues for given system matrix, suppose there are two eigenvalues, then here this n equals 2 minus 1 that is alpha 1 into a that means, our equation equals to we have to take alpha 0 into a. So, as the as the number of eigenvalues we are increasing or the order of the matrix increases, this term will increases. Therefore, we have to take r of lambda r of a or r of lambda equals to alpha n minus 1 a raise to n minus 1. So, here e raise to lambda 1 t e raise to lambda 2 t and now you have to solve these equations to get the alpha 0 alpha 1 and and if you calculate it finally, we will get the equation of f of a as e equals to e, e raise to a t. So, this is the concept which I told at basic concept as I told that it is f of a equals to r of a f of lambda equals to r of lambda and then we have to calculate the eigenvalues and for each eigenvalues we have to assume functions and that is written in terms of alpha 0 alpha 1 for first second like this and we have to solve these equations to get the values of alpha 0 and alpha 1. Now, we solve example and again we see detail how to get the state transition matrix. So, your question is find e raise to a t that is equal to f of a for a given matrix a equal to 0 1 minus 2 minus 3. This is the problem. Now, we have to use a Kelly Hamilton theorem. Now, the first step is we have to determine its characteristic equation. So, characteristic equation for this matrix A that is say lambda i minus A that is equal to lambda minus 1 to lambda plus 3. And this is equal to lambda square plus 3 lambda plus 2 equals to 0. So, lambda square plus 3 lambda plus 2 equal to 0. Now, we calculate the eigenvalues of this. So, eigenvalues for this will get as lambda 1 equal to minus 1, lambda 2 equal to minus 2. These are two eigenvalues. Now, these two eigenvalues we have determined and our purpose is to get e raise to a t. Now, we will take first function that is a f of lambda 1 equal to e raise to lambda 1 t that is equal to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 into lambda. That is f of lambda 1 equal to e raise to lambda 1 t equal to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 into lambda 1 because e and a and lambda can be replaced can be interchanged that is lambda 1 and a can be interchanged. Therefore, here e equals to lambda 1 t alpha 0 plus alpha 1 into lambda 1 and you know why we, are, we have not taken why we have not taken alpha 2 because here this is because here a raised to n minus 1 that is n is 2 therefore, we have taken this equation till al alpha 0 plus alpha 1 into lambda 1. Now, the first is replace this is lambda 1 equal to minus 1 in above equations. So, what we will get e raise to minus t equal to alpha 0 minus this alpha 1 is minus 1. So, it becomes alpha 0 plus alpha. This is the first equation we got e raise to minus t equals to alpha 0 minus alpha 1. Now, coming to the another equations that is lambda 2 equals to minus 2. 
Now, we replace lambda 2 equals to minus 2 here that means, here function of lambda 2 e equal to lambda 2 into t plus alpha 0 plus alpha 1 into lambda 2. Now, here if you solve it that is replacing lambda 2 by minus 2 gets minus 2 t alpha 0 minus 2 alpha 1. Now, this is equation number 2, this is f of lambda 2. Now, this equation this and this and now we can solve these two equations and we can get the unknown values of alpha 0 and alpha 1. That is there are two equations, two unknowns. So, we can easily get the values of alpha 0 and alpha 1. So, after solving these two equations, we will get the values of alpha 0 and alpha 1. So, this alpha 0 after solving we will get as 2 into e raise to minus t minus e raise to minus 2 t this is alpha 0 and this alpha 1 equal to minus t minus e raise to minus 2 t. So, now we have got alpha 0 and alpha 1 our basic purpose is to get f of a and that is equal to e raise to a t. Now, this e raise to a t equal to f of a that is equal to alpha 0 i into alpha 1 into a this is basic equations. And why this is obtained? Because of the Kelly Hamilton theorem, because A and lambda can be interchanged, because you see all these results, all this calculation we have done in terms of lambda, we have got alpha 0 and alpha 1, but to get e raise to a t, we have changed this alpha by a that is e raise to a t equals equal to f of a alpha 0 i plus alpha 1 into a. Now, we replace the value of alpha 0 alpha 1 and a, a is the matrix, this matrix, a this matrix a. Here in this equation, you just see what we will get. So, here this alpha 0 into i, i is the identity matrix and we have already got alpha 0 as 2 e raise to minus a t, e raise to minus 2 t. So, here we can write down this as 2 e raise to minus t minus e raise to minus 2 t this is 0 0 again here 2 e raise to minus t minus e raise to minus 2 t like this plus alpha 1 into i. Now, here alpha 1 alpha 1 we have already determined this one and this is multiplied by a. So, when this alpha 1 is multiplied by a, so we will get equation as or results as 0 e raise to minus t minus e raise to minus 2 t minus 2 e raise to minus t plus 2 e raise to minus 2 t. Here we will get minus 3 e raise to minus t plus 3 e raise to minus 2 t. So, here this alpha 0 i is the thing with this part and this alpha 1 a equals to this and now you we add this all these elements individually. So, we will get the result as 2 e raise to minus a t minus e raise to minus 2 t here we will get e raise to minus t minus e raise to minus 2 t and here we will get as minus 2 e raise to minus t plus 2 e raise to minus 2 t here we get e raise to minus t plus 2 e raise to minus 2 t and now this is e raise to a t. So, we will find that in this way we have determined the straight 
transition matrix. Transition means transition forms of state from initial time to final time. This results we have got by means of Kelly Hamilton theorem. But now here we have taken a case where their eigen values are distinct. That is lambda 1 equals to minus 1, lambda 2 equals to minus 2. And if we have easily we have got the result that is replacing lambda 1 equals to minus 1, then we are replace lambda 2 equals to minus 2 and uh, somehow we got reverse. But now here is a problem. Suppose if say lambda 1 and lambda 2 both are same, assume that the case, case is that lambda 1 equal to say minus 1 and again say lambda 2 is also equal to minus 1 or say repeated eigenvalues, then how to manage this equation? Because if you take lambda 2 minus 2, we come across a similar type of equations and that they are difficult to solve. Therefore, we have to use certain logic in order to solve this type of example. Now, we are going to solve an example assuming that there are repeated eigenvalues of a given matrix. Now, we will take example say A matrix is equal to 0, 1, minus 1, minus 2. This is given matrix A. And purpose is we want to determine e raise to 80. This is the aim. Now, the, what is the first step? We have to determine lambda i minus a. So, the function f of lambda equal to lambda i minus a that is equal to lambda minus 1, 1, lambda plus 2 like this. Now, we solve these equations. So, after solving, we will get lambda square plus 2 lambda plus 1 equal to 0 and if you solve this equation or we calculate the roots of this equation. So, what we will get? We will get lambda 1 equals to minus 1 and again same lambda 1, lambda 2 equals to minus 1, same eigen values lambda 1 minus 1, lambda 2 equals to minus 1, they are repeated eigen values and our purpose is to get the state transition matrix. Now, how will we proceed further? So, first of all we proceed with the initial step that is f of lambda equal to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 into lambda that is equal to r of lambda. Now, here function f of lambda that is minus 1 that is equal to e raise to lambda t again alpha 0 plus alpha 1 into lambda because they are repeated we have taken a generalized term lambda only. So, here we write we replace lambda equal to minus 1. So, we can write down as minus t e raise to minus t equal to alpha 0 minus alpha 1. Now, this is the first equation we have got. So, e raise to minus t we have got. Now, the problem is if you replace here another lambda by minus 1. So, if you replace another lambda, lambda equals to minus 1 as because this is another lambda, we came across same equation this. But problem is that if both equation are same, how will you determine the uh, alpha 0 and alpha 1? The this procedure we applied. So, in that case, we have to use the concept of a differentiation. So, what we can do here? We differentiate this equation dd differentiation with respect to lambda of function of f of lambda say at lambda equals to minus 1 equal to differentiation of lambda equals to r of lambda at lambda equals to minus 1. Now, r of lambda is this one alpha 0 alpha 1 lambda f of lambda we are written like this. Now, this d of d lambda what is f of lambda? f of lambda equal to e to lambda t and here differentiation of lambda that is equals to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 into lambda. 
Now, if you differentiate these equations, so we will get this equals to t e raised to lambda t and here we will get if you differentiate this, this alpha 0 becomes 0 and here in terms of lambda we get alpha 1. And now, if you replace here this alpha lambda equals to minus 1, so we will get alpha 1 equal to t e raised to lambda t. And now, about uh, alpha 0, this alpha 0 equals to alpha 1 plus e raised to minus t and now here alpha 1 is t and now lambda is that is this t e raised to minus t. So, here t e raised to minus t plus e raised to minus t. So, we take e raised to minus e t common we will get t plus 1. Now, here alpha 0 and what is alpha 1? Alpha 1 is this, this part, this complete part alpha 1 and this complete part equals to alpha 0 that means here we can finally write down this as alpha 0 equal to e raised to minus t plus 1 and here this alpha 1 equal to t e raised to minus t these are two alpha 0 and alpha 1 we have determined. So, you will find that even though they are repeated by differentiating this equation we have come across this particular result alpha 0 and alpha 1 and now the rest of the procedure is very simple that means here f of a equal to alpha 0 into i plus alpha 1 into a. Now, if you replace the values of alpha 0 as e raised to minus t, t plus 1, 0, 0, e raised to minus t, t plus 1, this is this particular portion, this part and now alpha 1 into a. So, if you multiply this alpha 1, this one t e raised to a t to this particular matrix a what we will get? So, we will get result as 0 t e raised to minus t minus t e raised to minus t minus 2 t e raised to minus t. Oh no, this is nothing but the result of this portion and now if you have to add this, so after adding this we will get the state transition matrix as e raised to minus e t t plus 1. See here this part plus this we will get as t e raised to minus t and the 0 plus minus t e raised to minus t we can write down as minus t e raised to minus t and now this this portion t plus 1 minus t e raised to minus t e raised to minus t. So, after adding this we will get e raised to minus t minus t e raised to minus t and now this is f of a or you can see e raised to a t as the result. Now, this is the state transition matrix of a given system when there are say repeated eigenvalues. So, in this way we have completed the part concerned with the state transition matrix. We have seen four methods. First of all we have seen a power series method, then we have seen a Laplace transform method, then we have seen the concept of diagonalization to getting the state transition matrix and this last one is the chemically Hamilton theorem method. So, based on the problem we can use any of the method, but you will find that using all this method we will come across the same result and this concept is also used in the case of the getting the state equation. We have seen the state equation also that is x of t equal to e raised to a t into x naught for unforced system that is the state equation is also depends on the state transition matrix.
Now, these are the some references. Thank you.